Hey, Bob. What? I bet you 50 bucks that I can make you think of a number that isn't divisible by three. Psh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Think of an integer. Any integer. Hmm. Okay. Now, square it and add one. All right. That number is not evenly divisible by three. Uh, you're not gonna get my money! I need that 50 bucks! I won! No, you're never gonna get it! So there's your fun fact of the day, kids. Take any number on the number line, square it, add one, and that number will not be a multiple of three. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> if you want to see why, then stick around. I think that we can all agree that any time you have a series of three sequential integers, one of them will be divisible by three. One, two, three, 14, 15, 16, 3,120, 3,121, 3,122. Any time you have a sequence of whole numbers, n minus one, n, and n plus one, one of them is going to be a multiple of three, and exactly one of them will be a multiple of three. Same thing if you have n squared minus one, n squared, and n squared plus one. One of them, and exactly one of them, will be a multiple of three. So let's real quick take a look at this sequence again. What happens if n is a multiple of three? If n is divisible by three, then we pretty clearly can see that n squared is gonna be divisible by three as well. If n squared is divisible by three, then we can pretty clearly see that neither of these guys are divisible by three. That part is pretty obvious. Okay, well, what if n isn't divisible by three, but n minus one is divisible by three? Well, if we go and take a look at our other sequence, notice that the guy on the left here is a difference of squares. That means that you can rewrite it as quantity n plus one times quantity n minus one. That means that n minus one is a factor of n squared minus one. And if n minus one is a multiple of three, then n squared minus one has to be a multiple of three, which means that neither of these guys are a multiple of three. All right, well, we've looked at what happens when n minus one and n are the multiples of three, but what about when n plus one is the one and only multiple of three of the sequence? Well, take a look at the difference of squares again. n plus one is a factor of n squared minus one, which would mean that n squared minus one is, again, going to be the multiple of three in this sequence. When n minus one is divisible by three, so is n squared minus one. When n is divisible by three, then n squared is divisible by three. And if n plus one is the multiple of three, then again, it's going to go back to n squared minus one. So no matter what, these are the only two options that will ever be divisible by three, which means that n squared plus one is just a loser. And this will always work. If you don't believe me, pull out your calculator and give it a try yourself. Take any integer, positive or negative, square it, add one, then divide it by three. You will never get a whole number. And if you do, then that means you need to get a new calculator because yours is broken. Anyways, I wish you all a fantastic rest of your day. Um, don't die, and yeah.